Hello everyone, this is Mike History 2, and today I will be talking about the Battle of Berlin. Before that, I just want to apologize because I haven't made a video in over two weeks, and there's a reason for that. It isn't because I started working or started school or whatever. In fact, I'm still doing nothing right now at the moment. But the reason I haven't been uploading is because of two reasons. First reason is uh, that I'm working on some very big projects um, that... Yeah, some new series that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Definitely I'll enjoy, but it takes a lot of research, and that's why you know, I haven't been making anything that much recently. And the other reason was this video was also pretty long and will probably be in two parts. But yeah, the script for this and the research and all that was pretty long, so that's why. But without any further ado, let's get on to the battle. So the Battle of Berlin, which was designated as the Berlin Strategic Offensive Operation by the Soviet Union, was one of the last major offensives of the European theater of World War II. Between June and September 1944, the Wehrmacht had lost more than a million men and had lacked the fuel and armaments to needed to operate sufficiently. On the 12th of April 1945, Hitler, who had earlier decided to remain in the city against the wishes of his advisors, heard the news that the American president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, had died. This briefly raised ho false hopes in the Führer bunker that there might yet be a falling out among the Allies, and that Berlin would be saved at the last moment, as had happened once more, once before, when Berlin was threatened. No plans were made by the Western Allies to seize the city by a ground operation. The supreme commander of the Western Allied Expeditionary Force, General Dwight Eisenhower, lost interest in the race to Berlin and saw no further need to suffer casualties by attacking a city that would be in the Soviet sphere of influence after the war. Envisioning excessive friendly fire if both armies attempted to occupy the city at once. Now, the major Western Allied contribution to the battle was the bombing of Berlin during 1945. During 1945, the United States Army Air Forces launched very large daytime raids on Berlin, and for 36 nights in a row, many RAF mosquitoes bombed the German capital, ending on the night of April 20th to April. 21st, 1945, just before the Soviets entered the city. Now, the Soviet offensive into what would later become East Germany had two offensive uh, objectives. Sorry, Stalin did not believe the Western Allies would hand over territory occupied by them in the post-war Soviet zone, so he began the offensive on a broad front and moved quickly to meet the Western Allies as far west as possible. The main goal, however, was to capture Berlin, and these two goals were linked to each other because possession of the zone could not be won quickly unless Berlin was taken. Another consideration was that Berlin itself had useful post-war assets, including Adolf Hitler and the German nuclear weapons program. So on the 6th of March, Hitler appointed Lieutenant General Helmut Reimann, commander of the Berlin Defense Area, replacing Lieutenant General Bruno Ritter von Hauenschild. On the 20th of March, General Gotthard Heinrichi was appointed commander-in-chief of Army Group Vistula, replacing Himmler. Heinrichi was one of the best defense tacticians in the German army, and he immediately started to lay defensive plans. Heinrichi correctly realized that the main Soviet thrust would be made over the Oder River and along the main east-west autobahn. He decided not to try to defend the banks of the Oder with anything more than a light skirmishing screen. Instead, Heinrichi arranged for engineers to fortify the Silo Heights, which overlooked the Oder River at the point where the Autobahn crossed them. Now this was around 17 kilometers west of the Oder and 90 kilometers east of Berlin. Henrique thinned out the line in order in the other areas to increase the manpower available to defend the heights. Now German engineers turned the Oder's flood plain, already, already starting to form by the spring thaw, into a swamp by releasing the water from a reservoir that was upstream. Behind the plane on the plateau, the engineers built three belts of defensive emplacements reaching back towards the outskirts of Berlin. These lines consisted of anti-tank ditches, anti-tank gun emplacements, and an extensive network of trenches and bunkers. On the 9th of April, after a long resistance, Königsberg in East Prussia fell to the Red Army. This freed up Marshal Rokossovsky, 2nd Belarusian Front, to move west to the east bank of the Oder River. Marshal Georgi Zukov concentrated his 1st Belarusian Front, which had been deployed along the Oder River from Frankfurt on the Oder in the south to the Baltic into an area in front of the Silo Heights. 
The second Belarusian front moved into the positions being evacuated by the first Belarusian front north of the Silo Heights. Now, while this redeployment was happening, gaps were left in the lines, and the remnants of General Dietrich von Sauken's German Second Army, which had been stuck in a pocket near Danzig, managed to escape into the Vistula Delta. Now, to the south, Marshal Konev shifted the main weight of the First Ukrainian Front out of Upper Silesia and northwest to the Nice River. The three Soviet fronts had altogether two and a half million men, including 78,556 soldiers of the First Polish Army, 6,250 tanks, 7,500 planes, 41,600 artillery pieces and mortar, 3,255 truck-mounted Katyusha rocket launchers, and 95,383 motor vehicles, mainly manufactured in the United States. The sector in which most of the fighting and the overall offensive took place was the Silo Heights, the last major defensive line outside Berlin. The Battle of the Silo Heights, fought over four days from the 16th until the 19th of April, was one of the last pitched battles of World War II, and almost one million Red soldiers and more than 20,000 tanks and artillery pieces were deployed to break through the gates to Berlin which were defended by about 100,000 German soldiers and 1,200 tanks and guns. Soviet forces led by Zhukov broke through the, the defensive positions, having suffered about 30,000 dead, while 12,000 Germans were killed. During 19th of April, the fourth day, the first Belarusian front finally broke through the final line of the Silo Heights, and nothing but broken German formations lay between them and Berlin. The first Ukrainian front, having captured force the day before, was spreading into the open country. A one powerful thrust by Gordov's third, third Guards Army and Rybalko's Third and Leliushenko's Fourth Guards tank armies were heading northeast towards Berlin, while other armies headed west towards a section of the American Army's front line southwest of Berlin on the Elbe. These advances, the Soviet forces drove a wedge between Army Group Vistula in the north and Army Group Center in the south. By the end of the day, the German eastern front line north of Frankfurt around Silo and to the south around Forst had ceased to exist. These breakthroughs allowed the two Soviet fronts to envelop the German 9th Army in a large pocket west of Frankfurt. Attempts by the 9th Army to break out to the west resulted in the Battle of Halb. The cost of the Soviet forces had been very high, with over 2,807 tanks lost between the 1st and 19th of April, including at least 727 at the Silo Heights. On the 20th of April, 1945, it was Hitler's birthday, and the Soviets celebrated by shelling Berlin and not stopping until the city surrendered. The amount of explosives delivered by Soviet artillery during the battle was greater than the, in the total amount dropped by Western Allied bombers on the city. Now, while the first Belarusian front advanced towards the east and northeast of the city, the first Ukrainian front pushed through the last formation of the northern wing of Army Group Center and passed north of Uterbork, well over halfway to the American front line on the River Elbe and Magdeburg. To north between Stettin and Zvet, the second Belarusian front attacked the northern flank of Army Group Vistula, held by Hasso von Mount Teufel's 3rd Panzer Army. The next day, Bogdanov's 2nd Guards tank advanced nearly 50 kilometers north of Berlin and then attacked southwest of Verneuken. The Soviet plan was to encircle Berlin first, and then enveloped the 9th Army. Now, the commander of the German 5th Corps, tracked with the 9th Army north of Forst, passed from the 4th Panzer Army to the 9th Army. The Corps was still holding on to the Berlin Cottbus Highway front line. Field Marshal Ferdinand Schoerner's Army Group Center launched a counter-offensive aimed at breaking through to Berlin from the south and making a successful initial incursion in the 1st Ukrainian Front region, engaging the 2nd Polish Army and elements of the Red Army's 52nd Army and 5th Guards Army. The old southern flank of the 4th Panzer Army and some local successes counter-attacking north against the 1st Ukrainian Front, Hitler gave orders that showed his grasp of military reality was completely gone. He ordered the 9th Army to hold Kotbis and set up a front facing west. Then they were to attack the Soviet columns advancing north. This would supposedly allow them to form a northern pincer that would meet the 9th or the 4th Panzer Army coming from the south and envelop the 1st Ukrainian Front before destroying them. They were to anticipate a southward attack by the 3rd Panzer Army and be ready to be the southern arm of a pincer attack that would envelop the 1st Belarusian Front, which would later be 
destroyed by SS General Felix Steiner's army detachment advancing from the north of Berlin. Later in the day, when Steiner explained that he did not have the actual men to do this, Enrique made it clear to Hitler's staff that unless the 9th Army retreated immediately, it would be surrounded by the Soviet. He stressed that it was already too late for it to move northwest of Berlin and have to retreat west instead. Enrique went on to say that if Hitler did not allow it to move west, he would ask to be relieved of his command. Now on the 22nd of April 1945, at his afternoon situation conference, Hitler fell into a tearful rage when he realized that his plans prepared the previous day could not be achieved. He declared that the war is lost, blaming the generals for the defeat, and that he would remain in Berlin until the end and then kill himself. In an attempt to get Hitler to calm down, General Alfred Jodl speculated that General Walther Wenck's 12th Army, which was facing the Americans, could move to Berlin because the Americans, already on the Elbe River, were unlikely to move further east. This assumption was based on his viewing of the captured Eclipse documents, which organized the partition of Germany among the Allies. Hitler immediately grasped the idea, and within hours, Wenck was ordered to disengage from the Americans and move the 12th Army northeast to support Berlin. It was then realized that if the 9th Army moved west, it could link up with the 12th Army, and in the evening, Heinrichi was given permission to make the link up. Alright, so want to know what happens next? Well, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I will be making part two pretty soon.